Hello, my name is Ethan, and I work at the California Academy of Sciences. In this video, we're going to be exploring how the sun appears to move throughout the sky, and what that means for our shadows throughout the day. To do that, we're first going to go downstairs to the planetarium and see how the sun moves across the sky. Then, we're going to explore how shadows work right back here. Finally, we're going to head outside and see if we can notice our own shadows move throughout the day. Welcome to Hofeld Hall. We've come here to check out how the sun moves throughout the day. Because the Earth is a giant spinning planet and we are on top of it, it looks like the sun travels across the sky throughout the day. We're going to take a look at that journey and stop at three times along the way. Once in the morning, once in the middle of the day, and then once in the evening. And we'll compare where it is at each stop. We're already at the first one, in the morning, and you can see that the sun is just barely above the horizon. We call this part of the sky the east, but the sun won't stay here. If we fast forward to our second time, you'll see that the sun moves. It is changing its direction, it's going this way, but it is also getting higher and higher in the sky. Eventually, it will reach its highest point in the middle of its path. We call this time noon. It is no longer in the eastern part of the sky, nor is it really in the west. It's in the middle. This time is also sometimes called midday, which makes a lot of sense to me because the sun is in the middle of its path throughout the day. Let's now fast forward to the evening. And we'll see that the path that it took on its way up to noon is mirrored on its way to the evening. Going the same direction but getting lower and lower, eventually setting here in the west. You can see the sun has gotten a lot lower, and in just a moment it will set below the horizon, and we won't see it again until the earth turns around and it rises once again in the east to do the whole thing over again. We just saw how the sun appears to move throughout the day. Before we figure out what that does to our shadows, let's take some time to explore how shadows work. To do that, I have with me two things. One is a flashlight. The other is my little assistant here. Now, any bright light can cast a shadow. The flashlight shining on my assistant casts a shadow to the other side. If I hold my flashlight on your left, the shadow casts to your right. What do you think will happen if, my move, if I move my flashlight from this side to this one? Well, let's find out. You'll see as I move my flashlight, the shadow moves too. And by the time we have ended up on your right, the shadow is on the left. Turns out no matter where I move the flashlight, the shadow is always on the other side. We have a word for this relationship. We call it the opposite. A shadow is always opposite the light that casts it. And as that light moves, the shadow moves too. We know that the sun appears to move across the sky. What do you think will happen to our shadow? Well, let's head outside and see if we can figure that out for ourselves. Welcome to Outside. As you can see, it is a bright, beautiful, sunny day here up on the roof, perfect for casting shadows. You can see the sun is behind me and my shadow is in front of me. It is about 11 a.m., but we know that the sun won't stay there for very long. In order to track how our shadow moves, however, we have to make special note about where it is right now. To do that, I have with me a penny. What I'm going to do is I'm going to find a spot that I can remember. Thankfully, we've put this giant yellow X here on the ground, and then I'm going to place my penny right in the middle of my shadow. In order to do that, I'm going to kneel down, find just about the middle, and place it there. This way, when we come back in a few hours, we'll be able to compare where my shadow is to where it was here at 11 a.m. It has been a few hours, and we're back outside to see how things have changed. Already, I can tell you that the sun has moved quite a bit. 
earlier, it was up here over my shoulder. But as the day progressed, it moved all the way to the other part of the sky and is quite a bit lower. Now let's see what that's done to our shadow. Once again, I'm going to stand in the center of this X and place a penny in the center of my shadow. Comparing these two pennies, you can see my shadow moved quite a lot. Earlier in the morning, it was opposite the sun when the sun was high in the sky. But as the sun moved, so did my shadow until it is quite a bit farther over here. Whereas in the morning, my shadow was in the west and the sun was in the east, those have swapped. Now the sun is in the west and my shadow is pretty far in the east. Welcome back. We just saw how our shadows changed position throughout the day. At 11 a.m., when we put that first penny down, the sun was in the eastern part of the sky, and so the shadow cast to the west. Later, when we put the second penny down, the sun had moved to the west, and so the shadows cast to the east. As the sun moves to the west, our shadows move to the east throughout the day. We now know how our shadows change their position. But they change in other ways too. Alongside this video, we have an activity where you can track not just how your shadow changes the direction it's pointing, but its size and shape as well. Thank you so much, be safe, and I hope you have a wonderful day.